so thank you for joining us today. My name's Vanessa and I am Outreach Manager at Crossref. In today's webinar, we'll be talking to you about how to get started with books at Crossref. Um, we'll have Head of Business Development, Jennifer Kemp, who works with all different kinds of organizations that use Crossref metadata. And she'll be talking about the importance of this metadata in the context of books. We'll have a short pause for any questions after Jennifer's um, presentation. And then Crossref Support Manager Isaac Farley will be doing a live demonstration of registering book content at Crossref. We'll have time for some further questions um, at the end. To cut down on background noise, everyone is on mute for the duration of the webinar. If you have any questions, you can always post these into the Q&A box at any time during the webinar and we will get back to you there. Myself and my colleague Susan Collins will also be available to answer questions both in English and Spanish. We will share the recording and the slides via email with you all over the next few days as well. Para reducir el ruido del fondo, todos están en silencio durante el seminario. Si tiene alguna pregunta, escríbela en el cuadro de preguntas y respuestas y nos comunicaremos con usted allí. Mi colega Susan y yo también estaremos disponibles para responder preguntas durante todo el seminario, tanto en inglés como en, en español. También compartir, compartiremos las diapositivas um, del seminario web uh, por correo después del seminario en los próximos días. Gracias por venirse a nosotros hoy. So thank you everyone for joining us today. We'll get started. Great, thank you. Um, hello, everyone. Thanks so much for joining what I think is our, our first introductory books webinar. So as Vanessa said, I'm, I'm gonna go through just a, a short set of slides uh, to talk about why we're focusing on books today, uh, how we can work together a bit more to make them more discoverable. And then um, our colleague Isaac will uh, take some time to talk through how the book deposits are actually done. So. As Vanessa said, there's plenty of time for questions. Uh, we have a few Zoom polls. Uh, we also want to get your feedback on how you work with books. So uh, I, I'm sure it's, it's no surprise that journal articles are still uh, the majority of our uh, 116 million records, but maybe it's a little bit surprising to know the book, uh, the book numbers. So, this 15% includes both book and chapter level records, and it's actually been pretty stable at 15% for the last few years, I guess. Um, but it is one of our fastest growing categories. So uh, for a long time, it was our fastest growing category. Once we introduced uh, preprints, which you don't see the number for that on the screen, but uh, preprints is our fastest growing category. Uh, books is behind that, so it's really good to see the growth and hopefully this call will, will help with those numbers a bit. So, of course, uh, you know, books predate journals. They're really the, the kind of original um, method for scholarly communications. And because there are so many types of books, uh, so many business arrangements for their hosting and distribution, Books really have um, an, an inherent level of complexity that I personally think uh, makes them interesting journals, um, but it always presents some challenges. Uh, so hopefully we can uh, talk through some of those today. And what we want to do to start off with is find out what kind of books you publish or are planning to publish or host. Uh, so Vanessa, if you can launch our first Zoom poll. Uh, we'll just, we'll take a minute or two uh, just to let everybody respond to that and then we'll share the results. Okay, should we, should we share the results? Um, maybe just a couple more seconds. Sure. We 
Okay, I think most people have voted now, so I'll end that poll and share the results with you all. Okay, this is great. Thank you for taking the time to fill that out. It's interesting, I thought there might be a mix and, and I was um, wondering if monographs might not be, um, be the most popular type. So, uh, so yeah, thank you for sharing that. And, and <clears throat> just to be clear, whatever kind of book it is, whether it's a textbook or a monograph or a series, all of those can be registered with Crossref. Uh, and so we're not gonna talk about XML deposits today, but for distributing the slides, um, I've included a link here to a uh, sample file. So for those of you that are interested and want to take a look in, in what XML looks like for a book deposit, we do have uh, examples on the website. And we include those for each of our three major categories. So we have books, of course, these will be uh, standalone volumes of various kinds. Uh, we have series. So series will have, you know, an ISSN at the title level. Uh, ISBNs for individual books, that sort of thing. Uh, and then sets. So sets might be a two volume biography, that sort of thing. Um, I also think it's important to point out that chapters are an option as well as books at the title level. Uh, chapters are something that can really help support discoverability basically because they're, you know, they're providing a lot more information, a lot more sort of um, entry points as librarians like myself would call it uh, than just the title level alone. And then <clears throat> Finally, uh, components. So components uh, can be standalone, they can be associated with books. So if you have supplementary data, a data set associated with a book, that sort of thing that can be registered as well. So <clears throat> we know there's a lot of complexity to books. We hope this is the sort of thing that, that is a good start to making it a little easier. So uh, toward that end, we introduced uh, what's called participation reports a few years ago, and these are sort of a nice graphical summary of metadata from each of our members that gives a little bit more detail than just looking at kind of the round numbers alone. So what you see on the left of your screen is a summary of a publisher's uh, recent book content, and it's probably typical of many book publishers. So we see some colors, uh, some numbers indicating that some information like licenses uh, are, exist for many records, but you know, there's also a lot of white space, a lot of zeros as well. Uh, and that tells us that uh, most of the records don't include some of this key information that we have summarized here. And it is um, some information. There, there are many more uh, metadata elements that can be included than, uh, than are highlighted here, but it gives you sort of an idea that uh, some of the information in these records is more at the uh, basic bibliographic level. On the right hand side of your screen, you see uh, chapter information, and this is a pretty typical example. You see a lot of white space, uh, see a lot of zeros, um, and that tells us that, you know, there's uh, basic information included, and that's great, um, but there's not some of the additional information that uh, some of our users find useful, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but there are two things that I want to point out here. Uh, one is references, and so we know that largely because of uh, the volume involved, the need to extract references, um, the, including those can be more difficult for book publishers in general. So if you're not familiar with our simple text query tool for matching references uh, and DOIs, or if it's been a while since you looked at it, um, it might be useful to know that um, we've added some additional support for it in the last few years. and um, it, it better supports um, high volumes of matches like uh, books tend to see, and Isaac will talk about that a little bit more later. Um, the other thing I want to point out is abstracts. So these aren't very common yet, but they are growing very rapidly, um, and they're a good option for supporting discoverability. And that's what we want to be very clear about here. So it's really not so much about the DOIs, uh, those are very important, of course, but it's really the metadata associated with the DOIs that helps with discoverability of content, and that's true for any content. The reason that having rich metadata and dis dis supporting discoverability is so important is because Crossref metadata is very widely distributed and to really a great variety of users. Uh, so it is used throughout scholarly communications, um, in any number of use cases from very sort of 
uh, simple, very common. I, I mentioned the citation matching. That's something that our users do as well as our members to, you know, much more niche or much more complex. And the uh, metadata is freely available for anyone to use. Um, so, so I encourage people to think of the metadata as kind of an opportunity to provide detailed information about their book content to really a very uh, broad set of users. And I, I want to provide just one uh, quick example here. So one of the things that we get asked for all the time is affiliation metadata. So with affiliations, what our users really want to see is affiliations for all authors, all contributors. So you can imagine, or maybe you've experienced this yourself, uh, a university uh, will want to know everything that their faculty has published. Um, and so if you think that uh, they're taking an edited volume, for example, those editors might be included with uh, the DOI when it's registered, um, but, they, but the book chapter authors and their affiliations might not be. So that's the kind of thing that um, we want, to, want you to consider when you start thinking about books. Um, and just quickly, um, I should say, you know, we know that chapters aren't always an option um, for book publishers, and they are optional, um, as is much of our metadata. But I just want to highlight very quickly, these are some of the things that we get asked for all the time. So users are particularly interested in references, abstracts, uh, license and funding information, and uh, affiliations. Again, they want to see it for all contributors. So um, finally, for, for my part, I want to mention just some of the work that we do, that we all do, uh, to make this sometimes uh, complex world of book metadata a little bit easier to, to navigate. And that really comes down to collaboration and communication. So uh, Crosstrack has long had a books interest group for exactly this reason. Uh, the group meets quarterly, and sometimes we talk about Crosstrack services. So for example, uh, schema changes and that kind of thing. Uh, but other times we talk about topics of general interest. Uh, we might have guest speakers. Um, so it's a little bit of a mix. Um, you know, it's, it's a group that's sort of trying to work through some of these things together. Um, and the call notes are, are available. So if anybody wants to see those or want to hear more about the book group, let me know. I'm, I'm happy to follow up on that. Um, so this group saw a need, this was more than 10 years ago now, for book-specific best practices. Uh, so that, that might be of interest as well. They're updated periodically, you know, when new topics come up or things change, we, we try to uh, address that in the best practices. But you know, feedback is very welcome. They can always be improved upon. Um, and some of you who may be familiar with the Metadata 20 initiative of which Crossref is just one part, um, you may be aware that they too have best practices. So theirs are not book specific, they're not Crossref specific. So if you're looking for something sort of more general, those may be of interest. And I, I think it's important to say, you know, best practices are very often aspirational for all of us. So there are you know, goals to work towards. There's um, rarely the case where um, everybody can follow all of the best practices at the time, but hopefully um, it's not something to be intimidated by. It's something to be guided by and kind of move us in the right direction a bit. So um, we have one, uh, one more Zoom poll. Um, before we launch that, I just want to say it's it's so uh, important to us and it seems very important to the community to really work closely with partners and vendors of various kinds. So these are just a few examples. Many of you will know PKP. Maybe you know them through their OJS system or you work with the Open Monograph Press. Um, we work closely with JSTOR and Longleaf and, and others. So it's really, it's useful for us to know who the community is working with. Maybe there are other uh, people we should be talking with, that sort of thing. So um, we have uh, one more Zoom poll for my part. Vanessa, if you can launch that, um, we're going to ask who you, who you work with. Probably should have included an other uh, option in here, but uh, maybe we can get to that in the, uh, in the Q&A if anybody uh, has, has uh, something else they want to raise on this point.
maybe if people have other, they can write that in the chat. Yes, that would be great. So okay, we can going to, oh, sorry, I was going to end the poll and just share the results. Yes, perfect. Thank you. Ah, okay. Interesting. Very interesting. So nobody's using a commercial or third party provider. This is great. Thank you. Um, like I said, it's it's really helpful for us to to know, uh, you know, what what parts of the community that you're working with, um, and and hopefully. You know, all of this just gives you a little bit of um, context for the, the books work that we do here at Crossref, why we're interested in hearing about you know, the work that you do, um, because, you know, having this sort of information, having these discussions really um, will help us improve our services um, over time. So in the meantime, uh, we do have a, a straightforward deposit option. I know I've been talking a little bit about complexity, uh, but my, I'm going to turn things over uh, to my colleague. Isaac in just a minute, but we do have time for some questions. Um, if anybody has uh, questions or points of discussion they'd like to raise at this point. And if not, that's fine. We, we should have time at the end as well. If anyone wants to raise their virtual hand. I can allow people to talk as well. It doesn't look like we have any questions, Jennifer. Okay, so I'll stop sharing and turn things over to Isaac. So thank you again. Please do uh, stay in touch and let us know how it goes for you. Isaac, you should be able to share your screen now. You Can you put the slides back up? Sorry, I was going to share my screen for the demo, but I don't have the slides up right now. If you can advance them for me, that'd be great. Yes, sure. Thanks. So thanks for joining us today. As Jennifer said, today's webinar and this demo that I'm getting ready to go through are meant to just be an introduction to the registration process for, for book content. And so I don't intend this demo to be a comprehensive session that, for example, goes through XML generation element by element. Um, but I will talk about a couple of our helper tools, um, which will aid in the registration process. So if you have questions throughout, feel free to ask them as I go. Um, if questions are specific or complex, or you think of them later, um, just reach out to us at support at crossref.org and include any necessary details in your message to us. Um, that will help us tailor our answers to your specific requirements. Um, also, additionally, later in the slides, I'll provide some helpful links for every, everything I present here, uh, and we'll make this presentation available later. So, um, and then we'll have questions uh, at the end too. Jennifer, can you? Thanks. So after this session, you should be able to register your books using the web deposit form. I'll show you how to register basic bibliographic metadata, uh, including full text links and ORCID IDs, um, also similarity check URLs for those of you who are using Authenticate or would like to use Authenticate. Um, I have all our use our similarity check, which is a partnership between ourselves and Authenticate, I should say. I've also inclu included an example of adding license and funding information to your metadata. As Jennifer said, those are, those are um, two things that we get asked about a lot, so I wanted to go through that. Um, that is, um, I, I, and I'll go through that using the web deposit form. All of these, um, all of these are available through XML, um, but today's session as I said, we'll, we'll be using the helper tools, the web deposit form and the simple text query form. So uh, by the end of this, you should be able to add your references uh, to your metadata uh, after I show you that simple text query form. Um, and then I'll also include some XML sample templates that you can use. So I'm gonna share my screen and demo now. So I've got the
the web deposit form uh, here on the left. Can you see, can everyone see that? Looks good. Okay, great. So I'll just refresh this, just make sure it's up to date. So this is available at apps.crossref.org slash web deposit. And you can deposit all kinds of metadata with us, journal, book, conference proceedings. Today, obviously, I'm going to be choosing book. So I can select book here, and it will change um, the fields or elements that I'll be in, uh, um, entering information for. So uh, I'm begin I, today, I'll be using one of our test accounts uh, to walk through this. And this example, as you can see, is, is very much a test. Uh, so. This existing metadata helper tool is called the Web Deposit Form, as we've talked about. Um, you can use it to, to register basic bibliogra bibliographic metadata like titles, contributors, pagination, publication dates, full text links, similarity check, URLs, ORCID IDs, uh, et cetera. As I said, I'm starting with the demonstration of the Web Deposit Form because unless you're comfortable with XML or eager to get, get comfortable with XML, your first step in the, in the book registration process is to go here to the web deposit form. So I'm gonna be using this example on the right. I've just put all of my metadata uh, in a little simple, simple text uh, editor here. Uh, and I'm gonna just copy and paste it over. Um, so I'm registering a, a single book, a monograph. I'm not registering or a series or a set. So I, I'll go ahead and uh, select monograph. My title is Obese Cat Care. So I'm just I've got this all in order. So my book DOI, which I have determined myself using my prefix, this 10.5555 is uh, our test prefix that we use internally at Crossref. And then my suffix is this test three. I've determined that prior to uh, prior to coming into the web deposit form. So I'm ready to use that here. Go ahead and drop the, the DOI in, just the prefix, prefix and suffix into the book DOI uh, element. And then my resource resolution URL is, this is the URL where my content will be available uh, online. I'll put that into the URL field here. Uh, my contributors, just one contributor, Bob. surname. I don't have an ORCID ID for Bob, but if I did, I could enter it right here. I'm not going to be adding similarity check as crawled URLs either, but if I did, I could add that here just by simply selecting that. Bob is the author. He's publishing with Crossref. And there's no ISBN, so I'm going to select that here. This is the second edition. And I'm going to be, this was published in 2009. So let's just so you can see what an error message will look like, let's take out the, the, the title, the uh, publication date. And I'll, I've got chapter metadata as well. So if I click that, you'll see I get a little error, error message that says, hey, wait, you didn't include a publication year. You must provide that. So click OK, clear that out and go back and add my publication year. Everything looks good now. I can click and add my chapters. As you can see, this metadata at the top is what I've entered uh, in the previous screen. So it's, it's already been uh, converted to XML here, right at the top. And that's what this helper tool does. It takes these fields and converts it into XML for you. So my first chapter is called, or the title is, Is My Cat Obese? So going to register it and same author. Um, and again, I do not have a ORCID ID for Bob, uh, but I do have a second contributor and that was his editor. Her name is Vicki. Just gonna add her in here. And my DOI that I have predetermined, again, using my 10.5555 prefix, and then defining my 
suffix here, test.chapter1. And the URL where that will be available online, this what we call the resource resolution URL, goes here in the URL. And my first page is page six, and my last page is page 17. So I'm done, I'm ready for this, I'm ready to submit this to Crossref. So if I click finish, I will get a screen that has me enter my Crossref credentials, and I'm going to be using the, one of our test accounts. And I want these resu results to come to me. I'd like to be able to see the results of my work. So if I click deposit, I get a success message. That means that everything that I have submitted has been successfully submitted to Crossref. It doesn't mean that, that uh, this content that I've registered has, has been fully registered yet. It still has to be processed by our admin tool, by our admin system. Um, so it's been sent and it's now working its way through our queue. Um, so there's still some checks that, that this, this metadata will go through. For instance, if I've registered this book in the past and maybe I made a typo um, in, in my book, that can still fail a deposit. So um, it's, it's critical to, uh, to register your book as I've done here, but then also check the submissions that we send to the email that, that I included uh, on, on that previous screen. So what I'm gonna do is show you how you can do that, how you can go into our admin tool and see the result of the submission here. So um, let's see, I'm gonna go into the admin tool. This is available at doi.crossref.org. Gonna log in using that same and plus account. You can see here, I've now logged in. If I wanna see any of my past submissions, I can just click the submissions tab. I can click the administration sub tab below that and I can run a blank search and that will give me all of my submissions that I've ever submitted using this username. And you can see here is my submission that I just put through. It was, uh, it started uh, just, just a few seconds after I submitted it and it took four seconds to go through and everything was successful. So let's take a look at that su submission. These are the submission details for my submission. You can see um, from the message here, my DOI, my book level DOI was successfully updated and my chapter level DOI was also successfully updated. So I had two DOIs that I submitted and both were successful. That's great. If I wanna take a look at the XML that I created using the deposit form, I can click this click to view, and you can see this has actually built my XML for me. I'll just show you this uh, in email form as well, just so that we're comprehensive, have a comprehensive overview of, of what I get back, and you can see I get a report of the XML. So this is the first thing that they went through. This is the XML that I built. I get, a, I get an email from reports at crossref.org. And you can see this is the XML that, that, I, uh, that I built using the web deposit form. So you have that available to you uh, in your records. You can store that if you like. And then I also get the submission detail as well. So you can see this says, just as in, in the uh, submission details I show you in the admin tool, it looks very similar. And you can see I submitted two DOIs uh, and both were successfully registered, both were successfully updated. So, so that's, that's good news. And that's, that's a basic walkthrough of how to submit basic bibliographic metadata for, for your book using the web deposit form. I'm gonna walk through a couple of other examples, but I wanted to pause for a second and see if there was any questions about this, this section of the, of the demo. Feel free to drop your questions into the Q&A or raise your hand and we can unmute you. Uh, I see Arlie, good question. Arlie's asked, <clears throat> how could I deposit DOI metadata for a chapter of a book registered last year? So, you, so it sounds like what Arlie, what you're talking about is you have a book, you registered the book, you did that a year ago, and now you want to come back and add chapter metadata uh, 
uh, on top of that to the, to the book itself. You do it exactly as I, as I have showed here. Um, both of these, both of my examples have previously been registered with Crossref. So our system recognizes this as an update. And so you can see from the response I get, I, I get successfully updated. So what I, what I would do is I just need to come in and include my book level metadata again and make sure that that's consistent with the book level metadata that I previously registered a year ago. And then I can add my new chapter uh, to that registration. So um, once you're in the web deposit form, what you'll do is you'll, you'll go through that first screen here for your book itself, enter all of that existing metadata again, again, consistent with what you've done in the past, our system will say, oh, okay, this is an update to this book. And then once you're done with that, you can click this add chapters at the bottom here uh, and add your new chapters uh, to, the, to the registration. Uh, and it'll be submitted just like I've done um, with this example. Okay. I also wanted to just briefly go through where these are now available. So you can see that, that my registration was successful. And oftentimes we get questions about um, uh, where, can they, where can I see this DOI? So if I resolve my DOI, I can just enter that. My book level DOI is 10.555 slash test three. I'm just gonna grab that. You can see my book is now resolving to that resource resolution URL that I registered. So that means my registration was successful. The DOI has been registered with Crossref. In addition, my metadata is now available in our API. And I can view that here. You can see my book title, you can see all the metadata here is for, formatted, and this is a JSON. This is formatted in JSON, not XML. Um, but you can see all of this metadata has been submitted and has been registered uh, by me. And then lastly, this is also available at search.crossref.org. If I search by the DOI, you can see here that Oh, okay. Oh, here it is. Obese Cat Care by Bob's sur surname is available in, in our search interface as well. So the registration itself just takes a couple of seconds. You saw that the, the processing of from when I hit submit to when it started and finished in the admin tool took just a couple of seconds. Uh, my DOI is registered and then it can take uh, anywhere from a couple of hours to, to a whole day before the metadata is available in, the, in our APIs and within search.crossref.org. Um, but you can see these are available here and this is what it will look like. Okay, going to walk you through adding license and funding information. So bear with me. I'll use the web deposit form for this as well. Let me just pull up my document for this. So this is an Excel sheet that I formatted. Actually, it's just formatted it as a CSV, but it's in Excel. You can see I've added all of the relevant information for this supplemental metadata upload. So this is my funder name, my funder identifier, and uh, some license information about the version of record. So I'm updating my license and funding information here for this book, Obese Cat Care, the, the book level DOI and the chapter level DOI. I've added my funder name here. I've added my funder identifier here. This is the DOI for, uh, for the funder itself. Uh, and then I have, uh, I'm going to set the license for for both DOIs to the Creative Commons uh, 4.0 license. And I want that license to, to start um, from 2019. And what I can do is save this license funding 
information as a CSV file. Let's see, you want to separate it, save it as a comma separated value. So it's saved. And then I want to go back to my web deposit form. Again, this is apps.crossref.org uh, apps slash web deposit. I want to come down, and this is called a supplemental metadata upload. You can see, I'll switch here and it will say, uh, upload your supplemental metadata CSV file here. And there's a, a link right on the form itself to our documentation that will, that will provide examples uh, like the one I've shared here for, for funding. So you can follow those examples, uh, add, uh, add your metadata to your DOIs as you see fit. And then once you're ready, you can upload that CSV file here. And so you can see uh, this is available here on my computer. It's a CSV document. I'm going to open it. Again, I'm going to enter my username and password. and my email address. Much like my last deposit, the system will send me the XML for this submission, and then it will send me the results of my submission. So you can see this was a su success. Again, this was successfully submitted to our admin tool. Uh, it doesn't mean that my metadata was updated. It means it was submitted for update. So let's... Again, I will get a couple of emails as those go through. You can see this one has already made it to me. This is the uh, XML. You can see here's my, it was successful. Here's my, my funder name, my funder identifier, and then my uh, license information, the version of, I'm applying the Creative Commons CCBY 4.0 to the version of record with this date. So you can see the XML looks good. And let's see if I got any results from the submission. You can see here it is in my email. This is what this again looks like. Again, uh, my message says FundRef resources processed successfully. That, that's good. Uh, FundRef resources processed successfully for my chapter level DOI. I get successes for uh, the license information as well. And then down at the bottom, I submitted uh, two DOIs for two updates. And so you can see I've got four total updates that have been made, all successful. And so that is how you would update license and funding information using the supplemental metadata upload in the web deposit form. Next and last in the demo, I want to show you how to add references using our simple text query form. So I'm going to move away from the web deposit form for now and go over to our simple text query form. Let me refresh here. I'm gonna bring back up this, uh, this other document that I had. seem to have closed it. Bear with me one second, apologies. Okay, here it is. Let me increase the size so you can see it. Okay, so I have a DOI that I would like to add to, to uh, my book level metadata, this book, book level that I, that I registered throughout the demonstration, through this demonstration. I would like to add this DOI, I'm referencing this DOI with, my, with the DOI for the book that I just registered. So I'm over in the simple text query form. And since I have the DOI, I can just add the DOI itself into the simple text query form. I can submit that and I get a match back. This blue uh, indicates that this DOI was found 
And what I can do is then deposit that and add that as a reference to, uh, to the DOI that I just registered using the web deposit form. So I can click deposit here. My email address is already added there. Uh, my parent DOI, I would enter this 10.555 test three. This is the last one I worked on. So you can see it's already there. And then I need to enter my Crossref credentials here. Click deposit. And you can see the message we get back is similar to the, the previous kind of process. And that is we're gonna get two emails. We're gonna get an, an XML file with the XML we just built with this, with this deposit. And then we're gonna get a uh, submission result, a submission log from our admin tool telling us how the submission went. So let's check my email really quickly and see. You can see here's the XML. I added this DOI as a reference. And let's see, was that successful? Here's my submission. So you can see the system is moving quickly today. It just took a couple of seconds for these to be processed. And you can see uh, my DOI here in my result. And you can see the reference, the references were processed successfully and this DOI was added. And you can see the success message here. So I submitted one DOI and one was successful. And if we go back to the API, and look at this DOI. I'm gonna show you that you can actually toggle between XML and JSON output in, the, in our admin tool or in our REST API. And I prefer the XML um, because it gives you a clear idea of, of oh, this is not the right DOI, apologies. Here we go. Just update this DOI here. So this is the DOI that I've, I've been demonstrating throughout this session, 10.555 slash test three. You can see uh, in my first submission with the web deposit form, I added the contributor, I added the title, I added the edition number, I added the publication year, I added the publisher name, and then I came behind that um, in the second kind of phase of this dem demonstration, I added the funder information, you can see that's here. And then I added the license information, which is the next bit down. Um, this is the, the DOI itself and the resource resolution URL um, where, the, where the content lives online. And then here's my reference right here. I've referenced this, this DOI at the book level. And uh, that is the basics of registering, uh, registering metadata with, with us using the web deposit form for, for books. As Jennifer said, um, abstracts are another key piece uh, that we often get, get asked about. Right now, there's no helper tool available for, for abstracts. You have to submit that via XML. Uh, I've included uh, some, uh, I've included some uh, helpful XML templates and samples uh, in, the, in the next slide. So I'll stop sharing. We can go back to the presentation itself, Jennifer. and maybe take questions right now as we're, we're transitioning back to that slide deck. One moment. Sure, let's see. Feel free to ask questions about anything you've seen in the, in the demo. Um, you can ask those in the Q&A or you can raise your hand and we'll unmute you. You can ask that, you can speak your question. Um, if you can, it can advance it to the next slide. We do have one, one person with a hand raised. Oh, great. So I can allow them to speak. I think it's somebody on a phone possibly, um, but I will allow them to talk. Um, hello, so if you want to go ahead and ask your question. I don't know if it's just been accidental. Mm, okay. Um, oh, hang on, uh, possibly. Hello? Okay. Um, I, I'm 
yeah i think it was possibly an accidental hand raise okay <laughs> uh, but we do have a question in the chat um which uh, somebody has asked is somebody developing a plugin to send book metadata from omp sorry a truck went past as i said that but <laughs> hopefully you heard that question um is is, is pkp developing a plugin <laughs> for yeah, someone asked, is, is anyone developing a plugin to send book metadata from OMP? I don't know the latest on that. Susan, do you, um, what PKP's plans are for, for a plugin with OMP? I don't know of any development work around that I, specifically. I don't either at the moment. Um, it's certainly something that um, you can find out, but I am not, it, it's not currently in our um, development plans at the moment, but that doesn't mean that it won't be at some point in the future. Thank you. Um, so as far as this slide is concerned, I wanted to make sure that uh, everyone who attended had access to all of the links uh, and documentation that I included in the demonstration. So you can see here, uh, I've included uh, links about be best practice and book content, in the book interest group, um, which, which Jennifer talked about at the, at the top of the session. But then I also included links to our newest XML examples, which include um, books and, and abstracts. Uh, so you can see a comprehensive XML sample if that's something you're, you're interested in uh, di diving deeper into. If you, again, if you have questions about the XML itself or anything that we've covered today, feel free to reach out to myself and the rest of our, of, of our support team at support at crossref.org. Um, there's also links here to the web deposit form itself. Uh, some examples and documentation for depositing funding and licensing license metadata using a CSV file, as I showed in the second step of the demonstration. And then lastly, some information about using the simple text query form to deposit references. Um, we also have a comment from Adilson in the Q&A um, who mentioned using the suffix with an un. And I don't think we have uh, book specific recommendations around suffixes, but I know we do have some other um, information and tools for that. Isaac, I don't know if you want to address that quickly, or maybe we can add a, a pointer to the slides before we send them out. Yeah, well, I'd be happy to. Uh, we do have some basic information about how to construct a suffix. You're right, Adilson, uh, many of our members do use um, an ISBN for the suffix. Um, but I'm happy to, to share examples of uh, suffix and, and construction of suffixes um, in, in the documentation too. I'll add it to this slide here. We can go forward on the, on the slide deck. I think that that's it. Is it, it? I think the next one is just questions. He's advancing. I'll <laughs> choose. Yep, that's the last one I have. Okay. Um, so I do we've have got one, a... one more poll to share. Oh. You want to do that? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so we did have one more question for everyone, which is how do you register metadata with Crossref? Um, and you can select all that apply for this. So I'll launch that now. Thanks, Vanessa. Okay, I'll end the poll and just share the results from that. 
a lot of people use the web deposit form, which is good that we're just doing a demonstration of it. Yeah, that's great. Thank, Thank you. you. I hope that uh, something I shared was new for those of you who have used the web deposit form. If you're, if you're willing to share, um, if there was anything that I that I demoed that um, is something you're excited about implementing into your workflow, uh, feel free to raise your hand or add to the chat. Um, if you have questions, we'll be here for a few more minutes too. We'll hang around. Thank you, everyone. Uh, we do have another question. Uh, Arlea is asking if we have plans to include books in Metadata Manager tool. Yes, uh, we're, we're reassessing Metadata Manager. I think the current plan is eventually with books in the future. We, we don't have a timeline for, for books in Metadata Manager uh, right now. If anyone has questions, um, you know, need need to think on it some more, or have any questions or suggestions or things like that afterwards, please please do get in touch. Okay, well, thank you, everyone. I think we can give you back a few minutes to your day. Thank you, Jennifer. Thanks, everyone. I'm Thanks, everybody. Bye -bye. Take care. Stay well. Okay, I'll end the webinar now.